Welcome to worship this second Sunday of Easter, and we welcome Samantha Zip, who will talk about her ministry in the Philippines. Today we pray for Jackie Lynn, Karen Blitch, Judd Haig, Larry Phillips, Pastor Dave, Bailey Untercuffler, Reverend Inga Williams, Brenda Hoffa, Kyle Kunkel, Oscar Miller, Janet Mockmer, Joyce Strauss, Linda Stewart, Roxanne Loeb, Earlene Mobley, Denny Hartman, Gail Deal, Benjamin Zook, Christine Klein, and Nancy Zip. Thank you so much. And there goes my microphone. All right. Okay. Okay. So, please remember and remind and help 
it's Oyster Week. Okay, this is Oyster Week. Next Saturday is Oyster Day. You know, the, the meals go out the door. A, a lot of people this week to prepare for that Saturday and also to help on Saturday too, but to prepare the oysters and the other things. So on the Narthex bulletin board, there's a sign-up sheet and many spaces about where you can help out with the oyster supper by volunteering your, your time and your talent with oysters, especially Tuesday at five o'clock until it's done, padding oysters. That's a, the, the big thing this week. So if you can help with padding oysters starting at five o'clock on, on Tuesday, that's great. Okay. The other thing we have uh, in the back now is uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Stump family uh, for uh, Relay for Life has a team. It's called Live Long and Prosper. All you Trekkies should know exactly what I'm talking about. How many of you know what I'm doing now? Raise your hand. Okay, well that's, that, not everybody. Our Trek. This is a, this is a Vulcan and, and means live long and prosper. If you're a Vulcan, that's what this means. And that's what the, the, the Stump Relay for Life team is called, live long and prosper. Uh, there is a sheet in the back on the table if you'd like to sponsor uh, a luminary uh, at the event. And this is um, May 21st at uh, Kutztown at the fairgrounds. So if you want more information, just pick up one of these sheets. Anything else this morning? Then let's begin.
inheritance and surrounds us with abundance. You are our God, our lives are in your hands. Come bless the Lord who guides us on the path to eternal life, whose presence strengthens and sustains us. You are our God, we will not be shaken. Let's worship God together, beginning by acknowledging that we are fall short of God's will. Risen Lord, we confess that we are prone to doubt your good news, but when we have to celebrate in your resurrection, we easily slip back into the darkness of our fears. Shine your bright light of joy upon us. Lighten our dark path. Help us to believe, even though we have not seen you. Touch your hands and sigh. Forgive us, renew us. Dear friends, Jesus is among us, offering us new life and hope. Nothing can prevent God's love for us. Rejoice, for you have been made new in Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. With the God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears who has been the wounded hands of your risen son. By your spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy, and strengthen us to be the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. taken from Acts chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed, by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at this time at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness for sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. We will read Psalm 118 verses 14 through 29 responsively. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Oh, 
This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the day of the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. The second reading is taken from Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming from the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of God for the people of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met was locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you all. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the marks of the hails, nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. There's a couple of kids who want to come up for the children's sermon. 
Come on up. I have a special thing to show you. What does this say? Can you read that? What does that say there? Danger. There's danger in this box. Why? Why? There's a wild animal in this box. You know what I did? I put a panther in here. And I put a pan yeah, I put a panther in the box. I really put a panther in this box. See, see that's why it's shaking, because it, it, it's trying to get out. Do you want to see the panther? Are you sure? Because the panthers are dangerous. They could, they could bite you. You sure you, you want to see it? Okay. You want to see the panther? There. I put, I put a panther in the I did exactly what I told you. I put a, okay, maybe it's not a wild animal. This is the pink panther. He's not going to bite you, is he? No, he's not. Yeah, a stuffed animal, that's right, yeah. Okay, so, but there are, there are things that some people might tell you that you're going to doubt. Like, I doubt there's a wild animal in this box. Or, or maybe your, your friend says, yesterday I ran home from school. I did it in 30 seconds. Would you believe that? You'd doubt that, wouldn't you? Okay, so there's a lot of things that me, but people... Uh, making tall tales, people lying, like, you know what? I'm uh, 12 feet tall. I'm, I'm 12, I tell you I'm 12 feet tall. Okay, see, you doubt me. Good. All right. But there's some, some person you should never doubt. And who's that? God, Jesus, right. Never doubt what Jesus tells you in the gospel. Or what God tells you in the whole Bible. Or for that matter, if you pray, you think you hear an answer from God. Never doubt that. Because while other people may make up stories that we can doubt and aren't true, everything that Jesus tells us is true. Like he loves us, uh, he gives us heaven, uh, we're his children, all these wonderful things. Always believe those things. Don't doubt them at all. Okay, thank you for coming up. Now it's time for the jingle offering. So if you would uh, get a couple cans there. Now the, the, the jingle offering today is to the Live Long and Prosper um, Relay for Life. Yes. Yeah, one on one side, one on the other, probably. It's, so, yeah. Okay.
Thank you, Lord, for all those who, who help in the fight against cancer. You people, so I can see the screen and uh, enjoy this presentation by Samantha. Good morning. My name is Samantha Zip, and I'm here to talk about my fellowship in the Philippines. I'm with Action International Ministries. I originally went to the Philippines in July of 2005 to teach at Faith Academy, but after 10 years of teaching, I felt that God was calling me to switch to full-time orphan care. So my first goal in returning in 2017 was to learn the language. While attending language class three days a week, I spent my other days immersed in the culture. And this is some of my study cards, and my cat helped a lot. I volunteered two days a week at two different orphanages. And helped at a drop-in center or daycare in a squatter community. And I tutored a little boy at a local orphanage. It was a full schedule, but I really enjoyed using my language while working with the kids. By the next year, I was asked to teach at Project Pagasa a trauma-informed school specifically for orphans. I taught in a split kinder first grade classroom. It was a hard classroom environment. All of my students had really difficult past trauma from abuse, starvation, abandonment, and just life on the street. It was not if we would have a bad day. It was how many meltdowns would happen and if we would get much learning in between dealing with trauma. I really loved my kids and the challenges of teaching, but I quickly realized that teaching at a school like Project Pagasa required all of my time and effort. My real passion and ministry focus was foster care. In the Philippines, most children requiring care are placed in an orphanage. Even the best orphanages cannot meet all of the needs of the children. It's just not possible. Even a small orphanage with just 15 to 20 kids still struggle when one child needs specialized care. I saw that with Aya my first foster placement while I was still teaching at Faith Academy several years before. She had been labeled failure to thrive, but doctors could not find any medical reason. The orphanage originally gave her to me as a respite, but then we switched to long-term care in my home and she started to grow. She needed a consistency and love that came from a family and a home rather than an institution with rotating caregivers and standardized care. My goal has been to share at small groups and churches about how foster care can change a child's life for the better. I also found that simply by being present opened up doors to share. Many in my neighborhood asked about my daughter and it allowed me to share about foster care. I can't share all about my ministry in Manila without specifically looking at Genesis. She came to the little children's home in June of 2017 at two months old and very malnourished. And that's a picture of her at two months old and she's wearing a preemie onesie, so she was super tiny. She was a re I was a regular volunteer and I knew that things were bad when I was called and asked if I could come and care for her. She needed one-on-one -on -one care the first few days. The original plan was reunification with her bio mom. However, after a week in care, her bio mom disappeared and things were placed on hold. During that time, Genesis's health did not improve. She was slowly growing and seemed active, but she had a lot of stomach issues. After several months, I was asked if I would consider fostering. So at 13 months old, she had spent 11 months in the orphanage, I brought her home. Within the first week in my care, I had taken her to a pediatrician in the city who referred us to a GI doctor and our medical journey began. In the beginning, we were driving two hours into the city for weekly visits with a doctor, weight checks, and medical tests. Jen was placed on medication by our second visit and we were switched to a high calorie formula. In all of it, her vomiting continued. She was given a barium swallow, upper GI study, blood work, urinalysis, and things kept coming up clear. 
Every checkup, I was told we did not gain weight, and I reminded the doctor that she was still throwing up multiple times a day. I would leave the office defeated and confused. Finally, over a year later, she was still only eating purees, and she was two years old. We were only sleeping in one-hour increments all night long, and after one terrible nap, where I watched her stop breathing, I had enough. I found a new pediatrician who referred us to a new GI doctor. We were sent for more tests, including allergy testing. She was immediately taken off of all dairy and placed on a waiting list for feeding therapy. It was at this point that I resigned from teaching at Project Pegasa because her care was full-time. But finally, we were going in the new direction. However, the challenges were not over yet. We slowly saw progress. The removal of all dairy completely ended her vomiting, but sadly, her reflux continued. So sleep was still a rare gift. We also had our first hospitalization. She had aspirated on her spit-up, which caused pneumonia to develop. The next week, we started feeding therapy. And finally, we were seeing progress. We were getting there, but she still had reflux, and the new GI was concerned that we had been on medication for too long. So we were hospitalized a second time in the city for an endoscopy and a biopsy of her stomach. During this time, I continued to do a lot of research on her condition, GERD being the biggest concern at the time, but she was also being monitored for benign premature thelarchy which included a lot more tests and scans. And that's um, a growth disorder that is associated with malnutrition, so not uncommon for orphans. After over a year of searching, I found a US research group that led us to more answers on her GERD condition. Once COVID came and all therapy and doctor's appointments became online, I made the decision to contact a US doctor. And we were given an online appointment and recommended to try a new medication added to what she was already taking and increase our dosage and frequency. So this is a picture of therapy. We used to go to the hospital once a week for an hour of therapy, but with COVID, we were no longer allowed in the hospital, so we did therapy two times a week on the computer. So she has chewy sticks that help to strengthen her muscles and move her tongue, and we were working on crunchy foods, so we had a whole bunch of crunchy foods there. And so we would talk with her teacher on the computer, and then I did all of the therapy. This was her medication that we shipped from the US. Um, it's called Tummy Care Max. And it allowed us to take an adult medication, um, her PPIs, and make it friendly for a little kid. And then she had it three times a day because of a metabolism of a baby. They go faster through the medicine, so it made it safer for her. And I had to home compound it, so I made it myself. I crushed her pills and mixed it with the Tummy Care Max and water, and one bottle lasted us about 10 days. So every 10 days, I had to remake it. And that was her sleeping. She had to sleep on an incline. I can't even tell you the difference it made. The first night that she actually slept, I woke up several times to make sure that she was still breathing. In the end, feeding therapy helped her overcome food aversion caused by untreated GERD. The removal of dairy, eggs, and soy allowed her to eat without pain and vomiting, and the medication allowed us to control her acid reflux. For the first time in forever, Jen was pain-free and sleeping through the night at three years old. I never believed that we would get there, but we did. Of course, COVID came with so many new surprises, but also some blessings. Jen had been cleared for adoption, gone through local matching, and was passed to international matching in August of 2019. However, her medical needs presented a challenge in finding a family. We had just been told in March of 2020 that they had found families interested, but things were stopped because of COVID. In Manila, we went into full lockdown on March 15th. Jen and I joined the billions of other people at the grocery store on the 14th in an effort to get a month's worth of food. We didn't know that that would be Jen's last time ever in public. We were told that it was a two-week lockdown, but it ended up lasting three months. Needless to say, my month's worth of groceries couldn't last for three. Each house was given one quarantine pass. That's mine. And that was the only person allowed to get groceries and medication. That person was me. But Jen was not allowed out because no one under 18 or over 65 were allowed to leave the house. We were on the highest level of lockdown, ECQ, enhanced community quarantine. So nobody could enter my home either, which meant no childcare. We relied on other people to get what we needed. Mostly my mission director would go once a month 
to find food and medication for us. But many times the items we needed were limited. If someone in the missions community was running to the store, I would ask them to look for things and then Jen and I would get in the car, drive to the gate of our neighborhood and I would get out and, park on, and they would park on the street and we'd pass food over the gate. They were not allowed to enter. These are some pictures. We had to take our dog for a walk. Um, that was our excuse to leave our house. So we had to wear masks to go out as well. So that's Jen and her mask. And we had just gotten a shipment from the States um, right before COVID hit. So we had some boxes that we got to play with. We got very creative in playing. That's us in the car. Um, technically, kids weren't allowed to leave. But because I had a car, I could put Jen in the car. Um, and by law, we had to have masks on in our car, even though we were just driving down the street. Um, so we would put our masks on, drive to the end of our neighborhood where there was a gate set up so we couldn't leave. And I would park and run out, and someone would park on the street and hand us food over the gate so that we had food um, because I couldn't run to the store with Jen. It was hot season, so we thankfully had a pool. And sidewalk chalk came in our box from the States, so we used all of it. Right. Finally, in June, our quarantine status was lowered to general community quarantine, GCQ. I was able to have a babysitter come, which I knew put us at risk, but honestly, I didn't have the ability to be picky. We needed food. I had already been warned that the lines to get into grocery stores, that some people said they could wait five hours to get inside. I was anxious about going out. It had been three months since I had left home for more than just a drive through our neighborhood. But I knew I had no choice. I was happy to finally shop for us and get as much as I could. In the new status of GCQ, I felt more free. At least I knew I could get groceries and medication, and eventually delivery services also opened up. So we have something called Lazada, which is similar to Amazon, so I ordered a slide because I realized that we were never going to be able to leave our house again, and we really needed entertainment. Um, we would take our bike. She got that for her birthday, so she'd take her bike while we walked the dog to get some exercise. Um, I used a broomstick to make a swing. We jumped in puddles when it rained. Uh, we did have to at one point go to the hospital for blood work for her, so she had to wear a face mask and shield to go in the hospital. And when we ran out of sidewalk chalk, I made sidewalk paint. It's just cornstarch, water, and color, food coloring. And we did church every week as well online. In September, six months after being in lockdown, we escaped for the first time. We went to a missionary retreat center. I knew it was a risk, but I knew we needed to get out. Thankfully, we went with friends. Lolo and Lola and Auntie Crystal, and they were like grandparents for us. We had to be careful of checkpoints, and Jen was not allowed out of our car until we arrived. I decided that if we could find a way to escape once a month for two nights, we could make this work. Jen needed it as much as I did. So again, we had the grace of having a car, which meant that we could get out, because Jen was allowed in my car, but she couldn't get out of the car. So we had to stay in the car until we got to the retreat center, and then they allowed us inside. So everything was really locked up. So in October, a friend from church helped me secure a travel pass for Jen and myself, and we drove north to Subic, an old US military base with a hotel that was willing to accept kids. It had a pool and a playground. We were stopped at the city limit, but the pass allowed us through. We were not allowed in any stores or restaurants but I had packed all of our food. In November, I was brave and we ventured there again on our own. Jen had a someday list. We created it during lockdown, things we dreamed of doing before her adoption. She had planned on, we had planned on riding horses up to all volcano, but it had erupted in January of 2020. So when we found the horse rescue center in Subic, we stopped and asked about rides. Though they weren't technically open, they allowed us to visit. Finally, in December, I found a beach just outside Subic that would allow children under 18. At this point, travel was still very much restricted for anyone under 18 or over 65. But we returned to that beach in January, February, and March. 
On our second visit, we brought friends. However, regulations were getting more tight and we had to start detouring due to checkpoints and children not being allowed to pass through specific areas. It was getting very complicated, but it was worth it. The guards at the resort started to call us the regulars and they look forward to seeing us each month. During that time, restrictions seemed to ease up a bit, but actually it was just the guards who had eased up in their protocols. So Jen couldn't be in public, but the loophole was that families could visit. So this allowed us to have play dates with friends. Two times a week, we had a family visit. I look forward to them as much as Jen did. It was our only chance to see someone else. I had spent a lot of time researching and finding places that allowed kids. I signed up for a farm tour weeks in advance and we were able to go the week before Jen left. They only allowed one group a day, but we were able to feed our animals, we went for a pony ride, and it was a great last adventure for us. In March of 2021, we went back into hard lockdown, but God's timing was on everything. Jen's family had been cleared for travel and arrived just days before hard lockdown returned. And they did have to wear masks during the entire visit because they had to COVID test to get back on the plane. So we couldn't risk anyone getting sick. It was no, not easy to say goodbye to Jen. I had her for three years. I had lined up friends to stay with me during the transition, but due to the change in quarantine status, Nobody was allowed to visit. It wasn't the best way to say goodbye or grieve alone in my house, but eventually a few weeks in, things eased up and I was able to start walking with some girls. And eventually I was cleared to return to the US and I flew back in June of 2021. And I had to wear a face mask and shield for the entire 16 hour flight. So that was fun. Um, what's next? <laughs> I'm looking forward to returning to Manila. A lot of groundwork was laid, but we still have so much further to go. My dream is to see a full foster community. I would love to see every child placed in a home, not an institution. I have already started a foster closet and been able to help several others get needed resources like car seats, strollers, and clothing. Currently, the government is not set up to financially help families, which makes it hard for a family to take a child. I'd like to find a way to set up an emergency fund so that a family who gets a medically needy child like Jen as a place to go for medical bill help. I, my dream is to turn current orphanages into resource centers. It can be a place for foster families to gather for training on dealing with trauma and child safety classes, a place for families to meet for support from other foster families. And I would love to see churches and small groups wrap around foster families, providing help and caring for these children, maybe through babysitting, respite care, going to doctor's appointments, or providing meals. Thank you again for letting me come and share with you today. Well, thank you, Samantha, for, 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 for giving us this wonderful presentation and all the work you, you've done and all the love you, you've shared. Thank you so much. Rise for the Apostles' Creed. In response to hearing God's word for us, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. To be seated for the offering.
praise you, Lord our God, who was and is and is to come. Praise you for Jesus, the faithful witness. Praise you for the comforting Holy Spirit. Praise you, author of peace. May our praises come before you, Lord, in your mercy. Holy Spirit, fill us with wisdom and charity. Give us the courage and strength to forgive. Lead us out of self-righteousness and love us into your discernment. Lord, in your mercy. Christ our Lord, blessed are you for receiving doubters, for being patient with the faithless, for loving skeptics. We pray for humanity created in your image, the object of your redeeming love. We pray for your church, the community of faith in a suffering world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Precious Lord, we pray for all who trust, believe, and claim you as their Lord. Those suffering the discouragement of natural disaster. Those suffering pain and terminal illness. Those tortured by temptation. Those sick with guilt and remorse. We pray for all those who need your special blessing, those in the bulletin and the announcements and those we name in our hearts now. May your presence and peace support each one as we say together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. May the God of grace, who brought Christ from death to life, fill you with joy and peace in believing.